What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Binge List. Today we're going to be covering The Witcher. And we would have had this to you about two weeks earlier if it wasn't for this guy right here calling out because of the damn flu. Hope you're happy. I work in a hospital, what can I say? Just so y'all at home know, I've taken this matter seriously. I've docked this pay a whole month. Uh, it's all right. Long how's, as, how's it long feel? Buy me beer. I'm good. <laughs> how's it feel not getting that that um, nice cash from this channel, man? Huh? Oh man, it's hard, it, huh? It, it makes almost no difference at all. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, I'm just joking, guys. He has been sick and. I don't even think that the show's been out two weeks. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> but but yeah, we've been we, trying we, to get together and do this, yeah. but it just hasn't worked well, out. And then the 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 originally it was my fault because I hadn't actually wa I didn't want to watch this show. Cause let me let me let me tell you why. Every, anytime they adapt a game for any kind of show or movie, it sucks. Yeah, I agree. And I went in thinking, this is going to suck so hard. And then you were just telling me, just get past the first two episodes. And I like stopped mid second episode because I just didn't get it. I wasn't feeling it. I actually went um, and read up on it. And then, and then I discovered that it's not actually based on the on the game. The game was based on a series of Bush books. Um, by some kind of Polish author, I think. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure what his name is, but... I should have yeah, wrote it down. The but. game is based off the books, and so they're using the books as uh, source material for the show. So that made it a little bit more palatable for me to watch it. So I got through those first three episodes, and let me ask you this. You've played a game I haven't. How much cursing... Uh, do they do in the room? Not near as much as they do in the show. I mean, <laughs> do they they're, they're uh, uh, occasionally, but there is some adult situations in the game. Okay. Um, but I, I, see, he, I mean, he, like he's... God of War had that, um, that scene, that sex scene in it. Yeah. Um, it's similar to that. Maybe not even that hardcore in the game. Um, I haven't played the game a lot. It actually... I started, I downloaded the game because I watched the show and I was like, uh. and then people, other friends and people at work were like, oh man, you got to play the game. You got to play the game. So I'm in the midst of playing uh, Witcher 3 right now. Because here's my thing. I, I felt like, I was like, wow, there's a lot of sex and violence in a game, in a show based on a video game. And I, my thought was maybe the books were, they were adapting the books because they had a lot of sex or violence or, or they were trying to be a little bit like Game of Thrones. That's where I was, that's where I was going to go. <laughs> like, they that's saw, what I felt. They saw um, the, the chemistry that worked for Game of Thrones that, you know, this um, almost too edgy adult content, um, medieval setting, uh, Work for Game of Thrones and its popularity was, as Lot, everybody knows. Yeah, lots of characters. Lots of characters. There's, a, there's freaking 60 characters in this show. <laughs> and one thing, uh, and um, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but I didn't recognize anybody but pretty much Henry Cavill. Um, well, that, okay. I put down a list of things I thought were different from Game of Thrones. That was one of them. One of them was that they don't have top tier actors. The actors, most of the actors they have on the show are kind of like television actors. Cause you got the feeling from Game of Thrones that a lot of these actors were from movies. Like, uh, I forget her name, the, the, the woman who played Cersei Lannister was from the movies. She was in 300 and some other movies. Yeah. Although she had done some television. Uh, I think she did the Chronicles of Sarah Connor or something. Some Terminator show, um, but then we had Sean Bean. You, you know, you just had all these actors you recognize from movies, or who had enough caliber caliber to be in movies. I don't get that so much of a feeling watching this show. And even Henry Cavill, he started in television. He he was on the Tudors. 
you know, before yeah. he 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 actually went to the movie. So I feel I feel like the 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 actors aren't as good as Game of Thrones, but there are there were a couple of Game of Thrones uh, actors in the show. Did you yeah? Do you realize that? Yes, I I can't remember the names of the actors, but um, the 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 lady playing uh, the actress playing Queen Calantha, Jody May, she was Maggie the Frog. On Game okay. of Thrones, she okay. was only in one scene in Game of Thrones, but she was memorable. I remember her face well, and I looked her. I said, "I know that woman. I don't know where." But then I looked. I said, "Oh, of course, she's Maggie the Frog. She was in that flashback that Cersei has. Mm -hmm. um, she was the witch, right? The witch, right? So, um, and then then there was another actor. I think that actor who, you know, in the eighth episode, spoilers if you haven't seen it. There's an actor who, I guess it's not really sport. This, this actor is helping uh, Henry Cavill and puts him on his wagon. I think that guy was from Game of Thrones. I think he was oh, the, the, the Night's the old, Watch. The old farmer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he was from the Night's Watch. Yeah, he looked familiar to me. I I, I think you're right. Um, I can't place him exactly, but... But they don't know, have many prominent... All these actors, uh, the most prominent actors, I looked at their background, they haven't done much. Like the, the like the uh, the girl playing Jennifer, the beautiful woman playing Jennifer. She hasn't done much. Uh, Freya Allen play, playing Siri. That was so well done, though. With I guess we, we just need to briefly go over the storyline, okay. just very briefly, because you really need to go watch it. And this is eight one hour episode, so um, is it one hour? Yeah, they're, it has to be an hour. an hour. They they not forty five minutes like some shows with commercials. These are solid hours. Yeah, solid hours, maybe an hour and some change. Yeah. So you need to go watch it. Um, it's worth it, in my opinion. But so um, if you know the the Witcher game, it's loosely based on the game. It's more um, more based on the books, and uh, this is. Where this differs from Game of Thrones is Game of Thrones was more of a political setting. It was more about the politics and the map and, you know, the lands. And uh, there, there, not, was, there wasn't all this magic. Not, I mean, there's there was magic, mild magic mild, in Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's like very rare. In this show, it's everybody's magic. Everybody's magical. magic. And so The Witcher is uh, our, our young boys that were taken in by a wizard and turned into these hybrids of humans and I don't even know what the other thing is, but they have... They're, they're mutants. Is what they're they keep mutants, saying. okay. And they, uh, they have some very mild magic capabilities, but their claim to fame is they uh, hunt monsters. I mean, they're the, they're the best at hunting monsters. And there's all kinds of monsters in the thing. Yep. Well, again, like I said... The Game of Thrones was political. This is more uh, witches and wizards it's more, and goblins. And it's more fantasy. fantasy. It's more like Lord of the Rings and, in a lot of ways. It has dwarves. Right. And yeah. I would elves. say I would say it, it leans more towards Lord of the Rings than it does to Game of Thrones. And it, the cinematography to me was more like Game of Thrones. Yeah. But um, the storyline is more to. Uh, um, Lord, of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Anyway, so you have this witcher named Geralt of Rivia. And Geralt is like one of the last witchers alive. They've all been killed off. Um, people have disdain for them because they're not, they're unholy. You know, they're, uh, and they're driven by pursuit of the coin. Yeah. You know, so their their whole lives is they, they just wander and uh, come into these situations. And in every episode, um, Geralt comes into situations where somebody needs a monster killed. For whatever reason, there's a monster wreaking havoc and they need him to kill it. And so, and he's like, if you have coin. And then... <laughs> You add... That sounds just like him. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, I probably couldn't do it if I wasn't sick, man. <laughs> but uh, he's got... Uh, what what the guy that sings? What is he called? The Bard. Uh, Jaskier. Yeah, Jaskier the Bard. And the Bard follows him, joined him in his adventures so he could 
write the stories of Geralt of Rivia, the Witcher. And uh, which to me, that's one of the most entertaining parts is that that whole dynamic between the two of them. So mm-hmm. you've got this storyline going on. In the meantime, they keep cutting back to this pig girl, this girl who lives in this village. Um, she's deformed. She's hunchback. She's got her jaws screwed up. And, uh, she slops pigs. You know what I mean? And her family doesn't like her. Yeah. Um, you know, which is a recurring idea in that time that if you had any kind of ailment, you were a lesser of a human and treated that way. And so this woman comes along, a sorceress. She comes along and first asks to buy a pig. And the dad says, the pig will be 13 coins. Yeah. And then she's like, well, how much for the girl? And he's like, eight coins. So he was going to sell a pig for more than he can sell his own daughter. <laughs> so the sorceress takes, this is when we meet Jennifer. This is Jennifer that we're talking about. She becomes an important character in the, in the show. Yeah. All right, you pick it up from there. Well, she, uh, she, he actually sells her, doesn't he? Yes. And she becomes a mage because she has, she can open up portals and just, you know, transfer herself anywhere. And they sent her to Eratusa. She, Which is like a, an academy for mages. Yes. And uh, she trains there. And then the thing that, that kind of puzzled me was they had they are following three characters. That they're they're uh, following Geralt. They're following Yennefer. And then they're following another character named Ciri. She's the princess um, of Queen Calanthea of, uh, what, what was it? Uh, I forget the name of the kingdom. But... They're being overrun by another kingdom. And I was watching this thinking, well, okay, so this is major uh, uh, invasion happening in this, this, wherever this kingdom is. One of the things I know is uh, they, 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 I would love to, for them to adapt like they did with Game of Thrones. They need a map because yes. I don't know, because I didn't know anybody... where Geralt's walking out, you know, going between these kingdoms. And I have no idea where he is in relation to this invasion because I'm thinking this invasion um, is happening at the same time. He's walking around and then Jennifer is at this academy and everything. And I'm like thinking at a certain point, um, they're getting overrun by this this kingdom called Nifgard. Yeah, Nifgard. And and I was like, why isn't Geralt being affected by the, these, these events, and why is Yennefer being affected by these events? Because I, I think they they that uh, Yuratusa is somewhere close to this main kingdom. Um, and but then you're... then at a certain point in the show, you realize. That these three stories of these three people were happening at three different times. Yeah, the timeline is the timeline. They they don't reveal that to you. So this is a kind of a spoiler. They don't reveal that to you um, to like the fourth or fifth episode. It might have been the fifth or sixth. Yeah, it's and, late. And late, then late. I was like, aha! Now I I'm starting to get interested because I'm like, I know these characters are going to intersect. I'm like, but how are they going to intersect? Because Jennifer is. Her story is happening like 40 years before Geralt, uh, 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 I can't say his name, Geralt's story. Ciri's story is happening like, I think something like 10 years after Geralt's storyline or right, something. Right, yeah, after it starts, right. So, so you're like, how, what, in, what in the world, how are they going to intersect? And then Yennefer, she graduates from Mage Academy and As you find out, people. yeah, you find out that mages don't age, so that's the explanation for why. And wait, and Yennefer sacrifices a part of her womanhood, yeah, to become this beautiful, absolutely exquisite. And I bet you could probably throw a picture up right here of what she <laughs> looks like. Yes, and um, well, the actress playing her is 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 she's mixed. She's she's beautiful. She's British and Indian. And she's naked for quite a quite a few scenes. Yeah. I was I was totally totally outraged. Yeah, I was. It was horrible. I'm putting up these. Uh, I gotta put up this uh, uh, like shots of these scenes to show my outrage on the internet somewhere. Yeah, don't put it on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't put those on the shelf. <laughs> anyway, so um, that was one of the things that initially when I first started watching it and the timeline was like, huh? What? What? Yeah. And then, and then you get four or five episodes in and you're like, oh, okay. But see, I like that they did that because it engages. You're trying to figure out, okay, so when did this happen? When does that happen? And, and you're like trying to... I was so bored up to that point. I mean, there were some good things happening. There was some good action, but I was like, where is this story going? I don't get it. And then you find out about three different timelines, and then everything starts to, to, to come together, and it just starts making sense. And falling into place. And there starts to be place. this epic battle, because this Nif, you find out Nifgar is going to affect Geralt and Yennefer, because Jennifer, and Siri. Jennifer is, has, uh, she's been kind of idling in this, this, because uh, in this show, mages get an assignment to a particular king, kind of like maesters do in right. Game of Thrones. So she gets an assignment, and she picks this very wealthy king. I'm thinking, oh, this will elevate my status. This will give me power. She was supposed to go to Nifgard. But for some, I forget how she she manages to get to this. She she makes her teacher give her this wealthy kingdom instead of this other girl, and this other girl goes to Nifgar instead. And what happens is, which is totally cool, I, I thought her um, this character named Frangilla. She she goes to this backwards kingdom called Nifgar, but because she goes there. She becomes powerful because Nifgard has ambitions to be a bigger kingdom. So years later, she has all this power, and, and Yennefer doesn't. Yennefer has been idling in this wealthy kingdom where people just... Well, where the king tried to kill, uh, you know, the wife yeah, and the baby. Not, yeah, and because she's... she's she hasn't given him an heir yet. She's a male her, heir. A male heir. Yeah. So, yeah, so... I thought that was great. I thought I that, too, that the little twist was great. Those are the things that made me become a fan of this pretty early on was that it's really good storytelling. I mean, there's holes in it. Uh, I We've yet to find something that didn't have some holes. But I really wasn't looking for holes, though. Well, don't look because you'll find <laughs> it. Don't. I mean, I would have to watch it. Like, <coughs> there are so many things happening in and gosh, man, there was always, like half the time I'm watching this show, there's something magical happening. I'm like, what the heck is happening? And then they like, there's so much to learn too. They, they have this whole thing with the law of surprise. I'm like, the yeah, law of surprise, law. what the heck is that? And that plays <laughs> an important role in this story because there is a point in the timeline when it goes back to before um, Siri was even born. And Ciri's mom, I can't remember the name of the princess. Queen Calantha. Uh, was that the name of the princess? Oh, 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 oh her mother. Um, no, I don't remember her name. But anyway, um, she falls in love. The, the queen's daughter falls in love with this guy. And the guy shows up. And they, they were having this big ball where all these suitors came from all the kingdoms. And they were trying to win the hand of the young maiden, the young princess. Kind and of then this, kind of remind me of Aladdin. Yeah. <laughs> and then this this knight in full armor and, and hood and everything shows up and he's like, you know, I have the right. The law of surprise. The law of, I won the law of surprise because he had saved the king from, the, um, from being murdered. And the, the king, if in this time, if you owe your life to someone, you owe them the law of surprise, which means... Well, that's one of the things you can request of them. Uh, that's one of many yeah, things. Yeah, it could be money. So it he, could be, yeah. yeah, yeah, but he requested the law of surprise, which means... That he gets. He gets... He gets... Whatever he wants, right? Pretty much anything, he gets to pick something in your future. Um, I forget how it goes, exactly how they worded it, but you, you get the... Whatever... Uh, Whatever fate has in store for that person you you claim the law of surprise on, whatever the best part of what their their fate is, you get to claim it. So in this particular instance, this knight shows up 
and he is he's calling the his, calling in his law of surprise, and he wants the hand of the princess. Right. And you you find out that he's a porcupine. Well, yeah, yeah, he, he's a porcupine, but that him and the princess have already been seeing each other and are in love. Yeah, and he's a he's a a handsome prince who had um, been cursed and turned into a hedgehog or a porcupine or whatever it is. Um, that was one of the silliest ones. Uh, but so then you find out that the princess has these powers. Yeah. Because everybody starts fighting and killing each other and whatever. And then the princess ends up whipping the, her and the porcupine guy up into a uh, tither, up into the sky. And so Geralt, <laughs> to stop it, he uses his little bit of magic. Yeah. And he, you know, throws some magic at him to knock him out of the sky. And what he did is he threw a baby into her. <laughs> is that what happened? No, that's what happened. No, I thought I thought what he happened. impregnated her, man. No, I yes. thought they had already been seeing each other, and he had already gotten her pregnant. He but was, see, he, they kept he, saying that but the see, child Siri and Geralt. No, no, were, no, 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 no. Geralt claims the law of surprise because he he saves porcupine guy from dying. Remember that. Everybody, when he takes off his helmet and reveals himself, everybody starts attacking him. And Joe Ross runs over there and starts defending him. And the guy says, oh, you saved my life. Um, what do you want for it? And he kind of casually just says, oh, I'll take Law of Surprise. He, he well, doesn't, he's not even really serious about it. And then right before he leaves the banquet hall, she throws up. And the queen realizes, you're pregnant. And then they they tell her, well, that's your that's that's what you get. You you get the you, by law of surprise, you get ownership of this child. You have to become his guardian. And, and he's he like by destiny. They're all about right. destiny. And he's like, screw that. And he leaves. And but, then but destiny always finds a way. Right. So so like twelve years later, and I thought it was kind of silly that he. They tried to establish that that girl was 12. That girl was not 12. All right. She, that child was about 16. No, I looked it up. She's 18. 18. Uh, well, there's no way but, she's 12 years old. First so of this all, brings she's... You, this brings it all around to pretty much the end, except there's a couple of more episodes where they that um, Geralt and Siri keep missing each other because Siri has ran away from her kingdom because... Um, Nefgard. Nefgard has overthrown their kingdom. <coughs> and Nefgard, they're trying to find her because they she's part of some kind of prophecy. And she's got following. these powers. She's yeah. got incredible powers. And so um, her and Geralt keep missing each other. And in the meantime, he goes to different places and kills different monsters. But... Uh, you get all the way to the last episode, and Geralt has been bit by a zombie. I, I, only thing I can think to call those monsters. Yeah. And uh, the these zombie bites are fatal right. to everybody but him because you know he's a witcher. But uh, so we had talked about this farmer picks him up and takes him back home. Where Siri happens to have been picked up by the wife earlier in a different town. And so you think, oh, they're going to unite. But then Siri runs off yeah. right before the wagon pulls up with Geralt in the back. And then the wife tells the husband that he's got a little girl, a little blind girl. And Geralt jumps out of the wagon and runs off into the uh, woods. And, and they, they reunite. Up. Yeah. And they've well, never seen each other, but she runs into his arms. That's one of the major complaints on it, uh, about people who've read the books. They said that they come in contact a lot sooner than they were supposed to. And they, and I, I feel like they probably just did that because, first of all, that when they were making the show, they, they wasn't sure whether they were going to get a second season. So they're like, we got we to gotta go ahead and wrap this up a little bit. Yeah, we got to create some interest in we can't We can't forward. scrang people along for three seasons or whatever. So that's what I felt like they brought them together. And then Jennifer falls in love with Gerard at some point 
or they sleep together because he comes in contact with her. Um, and he yeah, we missed that whole part. <laughs> yeah, he, he. And at the end of the the show, she's the mages, the mage academy era two. Tuza or whatever it's called, they come and get her. They gather all the mages to defend this the stronghold. La the last stronghold. The last stronghold. If if Nifgar breaks through this stronghold, they have control of the north. Notice that the north. The north. It's another yeah. <laughs> king of the north. That kind of reminded me of there's a there's a place in um, Game of Thrones called Moat Caitlin, and if you if you control Moat Caitlin, you you because it's surrounded by swamps, and it's the only way to get into the to the yeah. north. If you control this castle of Moat Caitlin, you control the north. So I was like, did they steal that from Game of Thrones, yeah, or was that maybe. in the books? But at the end, of the last episode, there all the mages are like defending the this castle from the whole Nifgard army, and it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that was a really cool uh, that was a cool sequence. But, um, and then you find out that one of the mages that you think is a good guy might not be so good after all. Yeah, you're talking about the one with, um, the cleavage. I start calling her cleavage because every time they showed her, she's no, wearing. No, this was the male. This was a male mage. Oh, I thought that the, the chick with, uh, the blonde, they, they made it seem like she was a traitor too. No, they, she got a worm in her ear. Oh, that's what happened. Yeah, oh, okay. That's why her See, and the there's kids. There's so many things to miss. That's why her and the kids um, attacked inside the castle. Oh, okay. <coughs> but at the end, you think that um, this one male mage—I can't remember his name—but um, he, they make you think he's been killed because he falls off a cliff, and then he shows up at the very end scene, and one of the other male mages is, is sitting there hurt. And he takes a sword and he kills him. And I read somewhere that it's because he he was a, a spy for no. Oh, okay, I didn't catch that. Got to go watch. This is one of these shows you got to re rock re watch um, to get out of. There's so much they throw at you. It's so dense, man, with like material. I mean, we're they, we're trying to wrap up eight hours in a few minutes here. And it was a man. There were some episodes I was like, I was checking my watch, my imaginary watch, and I was like, wrap it up, come on. <laughs> I mean, I like the show, but man, it, some of them episodes are long, buddy. Well, and I got you know I had stuff to do, but I, I, overall I liked it. Um, I like it a lot. I give it a solid recommend. I do too, absolutely. I mean, if you can get through it, it's on Netflix. I mean, one of the things that came out is, um, and I don't know how reliable this is, some analytic firm called Parrot has been saying that it's doing better than The Mandalorian. Wow, that's so surprising. a lot of websites are carrying um, this data from this analytics firms. Now, I, I don't, I, you, I would take this with a grain of salt because. I know from past, from the past, um, anytime some kind of controversial data comes from some kind of analytics firm you never heard of, they're just trying to make a name for themselves. So I don't know whether it's true, but it's they're saying that it's 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 more popular than Mandalorian. Well, and, so and that's that's great if true because Netflix, you know, I've been worried that Netflix is going to get wiped wiped out by Disney Plus, and I don't want to see that happen. I think. We need competing streaming servers. We don't need Disney already has ownership of too much content already. We don't want them to kill Netflix. We want Netflix to be a great competitor. I mean, that's what 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 capitalism is all about. We need competitors. So I'm hoping that net that's then, a sign that Netflix is going to stay in the fight. And then we got um, uh, Lord of the Rings series coming out on Prime. Yeah. So that that's going to hopefully compete. I don't know about Amazon. I don't know if they're committed uh, because they, their most popular show, they, they pretty much canceled it in the fourth season when that was The Man in High Castle. It was a great show. I don't know why they canceled it. I, I mean, I guess they didn't get the viewership numbers, but they should have. That was the only really prestige show that I know that they had. So I'm not, I'm not really sure if they, they got the, their heart is in the fight. 
So well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they're, they've dumped a lot of money into this, so. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. But uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, the critics have given a 59% rating. Audience score is 93%. So it's just doing, you know, I can That's see. That's actually pretty good for critics. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, and if you consider, they're probably judging it by those first two episodes because the stuff that happens in those first two episodes don't really have anything to do with the, the rest of the season. Like the whole plot with the him getting the commission to kill the, the girl who was born during a, a um, solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. I didn't get why that was in the show and what it had to do with anything. So I'm just assuming that the critics probably were are knocking it for that. Yeah, they, they, those first two episodes got off to a little rough start, but like I told you, I said if you can get through those first two, it it, it picks up steam. Yeah. Another thing I will note that I like that there's a lot of diversity in the show, and it's just not extras in the background. They actually have some some black characters. They actually have meaningful roles, which I was like, I was kind of shocked by because from what I know about fa fantasy shows, um, and I've heard people say this on the internet because uh, there was a hot, one of those Hobbit movies, I think the third one, there was a scene where they had a black extra and like people on the freaking internet lost their freaking minds because how dare... Um, they dilute my 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 Lord of the Rings fantasy world by having a black person. They people were actually saying this, having a black person in my fantasy world because I guess some white people don't don't want black people. The whole point of having a fantasy world is that you want undesirable people not to be in that world. Although there's orcs and stuff, so I don't. Know. <laughs> but anyway, so I was glad that they embraced diversity, and but they didn't do it in a stupid way. And in the stupid way is. You just embrace diversity, just embrace diversity, and you don't develop the characters, the minority characters, like, let's say, <clears throat> Star Wars. <coughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Because Star Wars has been good on diversity, too, in this, this last trilogy, but the characters sucked. Like the Rose Tuco, people, a lot of people were complaining because she wasn't in this last movie. I know they had her in it for like 10 seconds. But she wasn't a good character. If you're going to do do a diversity thing, you have to have you still have to have good characters. You still have to have good writing. Like that purple-haired uh, woman in Last Jedi was a terrible character. So it's like I like diversity, but I you know you still have the burden of bringing a good story and good characters, well-developed characters. That's the ultimate goal. You and know? you you can't get the characters just because you're the character is a woman like <clears throat> Ray. You can't give her. You can't make her so perfect. You have to give her flaws. Like Luke Skywalker had flaws. You know what I'm saying? So, I love diversity, but do it right. I agree. 100%. And they did it right in the show. They had a lot of interesting black characters. And the well, Indian woman who's hot and very complex. And that's all I'll say about that. Okay. <laughs> People are already sh shutting this uh, review off. <laughs> well, guys, we, we appreciate you coming by and spending this time with us while we uh, covered The Witcher. Um, of course, we're going to have to wait a little while before we can cover the next, uh, the next season of it, but um, hopefully not too long. In the meantime, we have got the first of 2020 is just chock full of good movies. Uh, I think we're going to might do a little talk show about what's coming out pretty soon um and if you guys want to um jump over to the uh power up channel um we'll drop a link down in the description it's where we're putting like extra gaming footage uh yeah that um myself and i got a lot and of paul games. and uh yeah. handsome dave are all uh, <laughs> uh we're all it's mostly cranking. handsome mostly handsome dave yeah true <laughs> But um, y'all jump over there and give that some love and uh, maybe subscribe to that channel as well. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And you got anything else? We'll see you when we see you. See you guys. Thanks for watching.